Welcome to part two of Dumbbell Day in our experimental series on getting back in shape using exclusively 19th century and early 20th century physical fitness methods. This video is a continuation of part one, filmed on the same day, a link to which can be found in the video description below. For the next exercise, we continue from Madison Watson's text from the period of the American Civil War. This next one from Madison Watson is going to use full body motion, and he specifically says that with this exercise, unlike his others, it must be done slowly, presumably to avoid some sort of injury. It is worth mentioning that everything from this text would originally have been performed with other exercises as part of extended sequences, time to music. The one you are seeing here is part of a series to work the trunk and waist. I am considering performing this entire series in a video to show how it would have appeared in sequence originally, and to music. If this is something that interests you, please let me know in the comments below. This next one is probably one of the most difficult exercises I'm going to do today, for me at least, uh, because you have to maintain your balance all while standing on one leg. The constant momentum forward and backward, with both the dumbbells and the kicking leg, make this exercise extremely difficult to perform without losing balance. It took more than a week of practice to prepare it for this video. This exercise particularly works the quadriceps and the oblique abdominal muscles. As with some dumbbell exercises in the previous video, this exercise uses the so-called bulb or ball grasp. These antique dumbbells, of the exact specification and similar in appearance to those shown in this text, have a band around the circumference of each bell. Although they appear decorative to the eye, these bands act as an extra grip for the fingertips, a good example of functional ornamentation. The most difficult aspect of this exercise is that it is performed entirely on one's toes, without the heels ever touching the ground between commencement and finish. It also works the pectoral muscles in an unusual way, due to the circling of the arms while mostly contracted. Mentally, it is also challenging to remember precisely how the feet are supposed to be placed and oriented. We now move forward in time to another author from the turn of the century, Tom Burroughs, a famous all-around athlete, Indian club swinging champion, boxer, wrestler, and fencer. As recounted in our previous videos on endurance contests, 
Burroughs broke the world record in 1913 when he swung Indian clubs for 107 hours non-stop, with absolutely no sleep or rest. This rare book by Burroughs, from which these dumbbell exercises are taken, is particularly interesting due to his knowledge of anatomy, which can frequently be observed in his description of the exercises. In honor of Mr. Burroughs, for his exercises we will be using these British antique cylindrical dumbbells, similar to those shown in his photos. As with many of Burroughs' exercises, this one helps develop balance. This next exercise works much of the body, including the quadriceps, arms, back, and neck. You will notice that my body and arms only come up to a 45 degree angle. This makes the exercise more difficult, as in addition to your legs, your back, neck, and arms never get any rest. In this exercise, the influence of the Swedish method, shown in our previous videos, can be seen. The body and rear leg become almost horizontal, working the back, neck, arms, and balance is made even more difficult by slow motion movements. The following quote from Dio Lewis in the 1860s sheds light on the holistic objectives of dumbbell exercises at the time. Quote, a man has 500 muscles, some of them almost microscopic, others of prodigious size. These muscles are longitudinal, transverse, oblique, interwoven in a most wonderful manner. Long and patient study are required to master their relations. Who can suppose that slow, heavy, direct, and simple movements can answer the demands of this varied and wondrous structure? This next exercise comes from early 20th century France and is colorfully named the aeroplane due to the propeller-like motion of the arms. Again, it works many different muscle groups across the whole body, but especially the oblique abdominal muscles, which are especially taxed by the momentum and torque created by the dumbbells. The position seen in this last exercise was common in 19th century physical culture methods, and was often termed the gladiator due to its vague similarity to the Borghese gladiator, an ancient Greek statue on display at the Louvre. Although the exercise goes back to the mid-1800s, the version shown today with dumbbells comes from just after 1900. In it, the upper arm is described as being, quote, bent over the head for guard. Quote, the highest physiology demands a balanced, harmonious development of the motor apparatus. This is secured only by a balanced and harmonious exercise of the entire muscle structure. In this view, the thoughtful reader will comprehend the great value of the scores of attitudes and movements involved in the exercises of the new school. The muscles of every part, the longitudinal, transverse, and oblique, all come in for their share of the work. Diocletian Lewis That wraps up today. All in all, felt about like running a marathon. Uh, despite the lightweight nature of these dumbbells, 
It's extremely strenuous because you're working far more than just your biceps or your triceps or your arms or whatever, but it's really a, a holistic, whole body workout. Uh, it's funny because I think a lot of modern uh, people today might watch this video and think, ah, you know, they were so wimpy back then. Uh, these, these light weights and these, uh, these types of exercise on your toes. I think the people back then would probably have the same thing to say about modern popular gym folks today, you know, who basically be resting their arm as they're doing a curl to get a totally uh, isolated muscle exercise. You know, from their perspective, they would be, well, you, we, yeah, we use lighter weights, but we did it on our toes. We did it with a fully extended arm for an extremely long length of time. Did it while balancing on one leg and kicking up and down. I mean, all sorts of uh, things. So, uh, really interesting. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. It's certainly been interesting uh, for me and this, uh, this continued uh, exploration and study. Uh, thank you again and hope to see you next time.